Hey everyone, oh. and welcome to episode 139 of Let's Play. And today, that's the drum roll, we have our lovely friends from Be My Friend podcast, Tyler and Tiff. And first of all, I have to say to the whole universe that I adore their podcast so much. Every time I listen to it, they make me laugh and crack up. I really just, I'm not a very funny person, I think. Like, I'm a pretty serious person, but I literally laugh out loud the entire time at your videos. So I take my hat off, my non tinfoil hat off to you, and <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Girl, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. I love watching your videos just for straight up analysis and... I'm glad that you could find entertainment in it because I do think at the end of the day that might be all we're good for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> no, do you guys have know, do we have, have good analysis too? Like I was saying before, your I love you analysis is like very profound, I have to say. So don't worry, it's not just entertainment. <laughs> That's just because we love our I love you boys just too much. So <laughs> we're very serious when it comes to simping. Yes. Yes. Oh, actually, I totally forgot to ask you. Did you guys ever have dreams with your webtoon characters? You know what? Have a, if we did, should we save that for a bonus question? Which is something I do for patrons at the end. Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. I, like I, I had a dream. I had a dream with a webtoon character, so we can discuss. <laughs> oh my goodness, you lucky girl. I actually have, so. Okay, great. Perfect. And <laughs> Tiff, if you have it, you can invent one that you wish. Just to make have. one up. So, well, wow. <laughs> Look All at right. no. <laughs> That boy better be ready. <laughs> Mine's quite, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. Be oh. <laughs> oh. Well. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. good thing the husband's sleeping right <laughs> yeah no kidding mine's gone all right well let's go <laughs> where is mine <laughs> who cares <laughs> all right so this episode starts off speaking of blushing and embarrassing things uh just a recap which we're not going to analyze it's a recap of sam and charles discussing how he says oh you have to be the one to physically initiate and she's embarrassed blah 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 right so you know we know that this is this topic is going to come up in this episode. So we continue and we open up at the office. Sam is there typing away in her not frumpy outfit. And she is, of course, sneaking a glance at Charles <laughs> with a little blush on her face. Charles and Umed are talking and she is really frustrated. She slumps over. Ugh, what am I doing? Why do I always overthink things? Of course, everything is back to normal today. Charles said things have to stay professional at work. But even before he arrived, Charles kept his distance at the coffee shop, in the car, in the elevator, arriving at the office when we parted ways. So, um, yeah, what do you guys think about Charles's choice? All those panels, I just have to say, I, I was actually cracking up at, at the way that Sam was reacting to Charles' distance in <laughs> each one of those was just ridiculous. He's like walking into her, his office like normal. She's like panicking in the background i know he's still so close to her and she's like there's so much distance <laughs> so much distance i'm like is it because he's not on top of you sam he can't oh, always be yeah. on top of you <laughs> i love her face too she's just like i don't know it's such an odd face for sam it was hilarious to see her like that a little i don't know comic behind her you know a little comedian in her it was just so funny to see her facial expression it was constantly very, like that <laughs> well i know it's really telling of her character though it, so much has changed and yet has not changed for sam she is still so so confused and just awkward and also if they're trying to hide their liaison i mean charles might be doing a good job but sam certainly is not <laughs> no i i don't think oh. she's grasped that he's probably just trying to to be subtle about it it's not any hard feelings toward her obviously as we get further in that she figures she might be figuring that out but it was just it was just so funny how she thought it was so awkward that he was just not around <laughs> like she, he wasn't an inch away from her face <laughs> she's like i don't know i don't know i don't know i think you should be on top of me but i mean who wouldn't want that welsh man on top of them so i understand <laughs> i feel it yeah, and i think i mean First of all, she has no experience dating, period. But I do right. think that them being in a professional setting where, first of all, she's the daughter of the CEO and then he's her boss, it's awkward. Like, what would 
I don't know how they should relate to each other. Like, even if it wasn't her first dating experience. Right. Well, exactly. There's a lot going on. Even if dating is technically okay within their company, it's even Charles had made a comment about that prior where he goes, I just don't think doing that in the office is real, it's real intelligent <laughs> yeah. of us. We should probably refrain. Right. I yeah, think I it's super like, awkward. I asked this question on the last podcast. Like, do you think Charles is planning on not telling anybody or do you think he's just like not doesn't want it to be revealed yet or does he just not even think about what he wants the office to know I feel like he takes it as these other relationships that he has been in the relationships I use that word very loosely um just for him to feed whatever that is missing that he wants. But of course he doesn't want to get attached because of what happened in his past. So I don't think he would admit it to anyone. I only think it even crosses his mind isn't a worry to him because he's trying to treat this as he does with Rosewood um, and those other past relationships. However, you know, Sam is affecting him differently and we see that. So it's a little bit harder for him just to ignore and play off like nothing's really going on so right I think I agree I don't think he in the grand scheme of things I would assume at least where he's at right now the way he's thinking about it he is he would not be planning on letting anybody know about it Mm -hmm. because I obviously it's it's so clear that deep down he is being like Tiff said affected quite differently with Sam this go around however it's it's almost hard to watch him because all he wants is to treat it like it's just it's just kind of like a friends with benefits kind of thing like he does with the other girls so that's why I would assume he doesn't want to tell anybody because to him he's trying really hard to make it so that this isn't serious right yeah but uh, there's what do you how, how do you feel yeah what are your thoughts what you said that he he doesn't want wouldn't want to advertise it because he doesn't want to make it a thing but i also think he hasn't thought it through because i don't know how he's gonna hide it he like just from here right he knows he can hide it and if he was with a more experienced person they probably would be too but i don't think it's possible with someone like sam Mm -hmm. like anyone can see her reaction to him right and he i feel like he's noticing that as well uh, he just sees how much softer she is compared to the other women he has been with. And, you know, he's starting to fall for her more so than he thought he would. And, you know, he tries to turn back because he doesn't want to let his wall down. But, you know, he he's not doing a very good job at it. So she's coming crashing through that wall. <laughs> We want those chains to She's not break. even trying. <laughs> She's just accidentally on a bulldozer. Yeah. <laughs> just happening. She's just like swinging around like Miley Cyrus. On a wrecking <laughs> ball. Yeah. Just breaking down that wall. He's just, he's not prepared. <laughs> yeah, I think Better. he's going to rebuild his wall. I think he's going to run away. Do you I think, think so? Yes. Oh, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I think that Charles is going to get hurt. Um, I think he's going to think something, but it's not really that. I always have this theory that Charles is going to think something's going on where Sam is trying to hurt him and he's going to then go away. But I always say that he's going to come back because I don't think we would spend so much time on Charles and seeing this journey of him and the growth he's making just to see him go away. Because if he does run away, that growth was for nothing he didn't grow then he just took 20 steps back Mm -hmm. so I think that this is more of a journey for him to self-heal than it is for Sam Mm -hmm. so but I do think he's gonna maybe think that something's going on with her and Marshall or like he's gonna get hurt by Sam and think it's just like his ex and that's why he's gonna leave or think that he's no good for Sam and he has to leave so I think it's definitely one of those two. He might run into a situation where he he thinks something's going on or he's just too traumatized still. Yes. We've seen his hearts aren't completely thawed either. They're getting there, but even so, he could put them right back in the freezer, so. (laughs) I always tell Tyler, I love the idea of him, like, 
coming like Sam is fully grown with Marshall and everything and maybe they're just friends whatever I always love the idea of Charles like getting out of a taxi cab and being there in the last episode like (laughs) Sam and I'm like no it's so interesting because I never in my like theories for Charles I never thought of what you said but that is that could be very likely because that would trigger him like I always thought he would be afraid that they're getting too close and then be like no 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 I gotta run I'm taking the job offer but that is a very interesting idea and that would definitely yeah her him thinking she's betraying him would be a huge trigger mm-hmm. even if even it's just the littlest thing the littlest just... thing boy is damaged and I think people <laughs> forget like I mean geez <laughs> that's a bad situation his past like he was in love you knew he was in love he was so happy coming home from his job whatever that was he's like hey I'm home honey and you know hearing all those sounds up above walking in to see that the love of his life is you know fooling around with whoever we don't even know if it was his best friend we don't know who this guy was but you know Charles what you can tell in that past life that he was a different man than he is now so super yeah, sad even his eyes are even drawn like much bigger which to me emphasizes like childness uh you know childishness youth trusting so yeah it's gone uh, our boy charles <laughs> we're here for you <laughs> yeah uh, so anywho she sam is you know flustered she says i don't know what i was expecting i have no experience And she's thinking about what he told her, where he says, for the time being, I think you should be the one to make the physical advancements. And she's like, how would I even do that? And we have this little blog, Sam. She's like, I'm going to sex you up. (laughs) Which is, I don't know what that means, but I guess that's just Sam being completely confused and not knowing what to to say. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love... I love all of her weird like sexual ideas. <laughs> I know. Like, does that do anything for you? <laughs> like flapping his his shoes. Like, just, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, poor girl. <laughs> poor girl. <laughs> How funny would it have been if Mungi put in some sound effects there of like a <laughs> floppy wet sound <laughs> on the <laughs> shoe? <laughs> I'm surprised she did not because she's put sound effects in certain episodes. Before. That would have been hilarious. That's what I imagined in my head. She just, just like bobbles over Bob. to him. She's <laughs> like, like the blob. It, it, it's so it doesn't seem to matter how far she could get or how much confidence she could grow. She's still deeply concerned that she just does not have the ability to seduce this man when in all reality it takes virtually nothing like he is he is smitten (laughs) right I love that Manji puts in like someone the experience of someone who is totally sexually inexperienced and you know I talked about this before like I you come from a a culture where we were you know did not have boyfriends and not fool around none of that and when I met my husband I was like completely a neophyte and he was not because he did not come from where I came from and I was like, what do I do? <laughs> Tell me what to do to make you happy. So I was like, I didn't know, you know, I was just like guessing. Obviously I had some like reading experience, I guess, but you know. <laughs> so, You're like yeah, a real life Sam. <laughs> uh, not really, because I'm not shy at all. Um, oh. But... <laughs> But well, yeah, right. but you were direct I, enough to be like, okay, tell me what to do. Yeah, you're like, tell me. <laughs> Sam's not doing that. <laughs> She's like, do I roll around on the ground? <laughs> what do okay. I do? <laughs> well, it seems she has no clothes on in the blob pictures, so she's getting something, right? <laughs> oh, that is true. That is true. That's all you got to do, Sam. I mean, <laughs> it's really all you got to do. <laughs> it, it's you don't so even have to funny. do that much. You could just allude to it. You could just be like, Right. Yes, I are. <laughs> and he'd be like, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And now she reverts into this is very Sam like. She's like, I wish this stuff was more like gaming. All RPGs taught me that you just give them gifts until they love you. And now we have this very, very cute like framing where she says, everyone has nice reputation markers and a very clear set of likes and dislikes. And I love this picture. And I really was like looking at it. So we have the three little cute um avatars or whatever they're called we have charles and he has his hearts are blank and it says it's complicated question mark question mark question mark likes escape rooms honesty we have marshall and it says acquaintances likes gaming cute pet photos and he has a heart and a half 
And we have link, just friends, likes, protein, outdoors, full heart, but it's locked. So what do you make of this? First of all, this was looks like Stardew Valley, and I love that. <laughs> stardew valley oh, yeah. and it's it's so true i you just give the people like parsnips and then they marry you <laughs> so i feel her pain <laughs> i'm like why is it this working i'm just throwing parsnips at my husband i, I do by love the way, that if gifts. <laughs> if right, she'll be like think, carl's here's a gift like she'll right. start she'll be like do you like broccoli no how about this flower <laughs> I'm just thinking of Stardew Valley it's like you can give them vegetables but yeah it, it is interesting because the only one she seems to in her own mind at least think that she is that a sign does she think she is getting through romantically possibly too Marshall or am I reading too far into this well I think because it has acquaintance acquaintances um I don't think so because link is filled to the top and it just says just friends. That is true. Maybe so, the amount of the hearts don't matter. So I think it's, it's like based how on much like them. Like they, that's what I also was wondering. I don't think it's love. I think it's just like, and like, I mean, oh, yeah. it could be any kind of love, like friendship love or, you know, I don't know, brotherly love, let's say, but. Right. Yeah. I think it's weird though, that link has a lock on it when it says just friends. Like that was weird to me because it's not locked is it, it just to be... say that it's it's not gonna move at all like it's locked in I... place now like their relationship isn't gonna get better or worse maybe i see what you're saying like, or it's, it's finished yeah. i don't know yeah like she completed that quest she <laughs> gave him so many turnips that they are friends now forever now it's locked and you can never return doesn't Which... matter <laughs> i'm glad please don't <laughs> <laughs> Please so don't. you guys were not not on the link ship no Ever? when i first read the story i i'm not gonna lie i i was i was there for it while it was unraveling i was like oh oh okay yeah he's pretty hot she's getting okay sam you go girl and and then i just followed it like everybody else as soon as he was like i don't find you attractive then i was like Ooh. <laughs> like <laughs> hey, honey there are better ways to put that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I was the opposite I always tell Tyler this I was it's not a link lover I always whenever there's a super sweet boy like evil Andrew I'm like there is something wrong with him I don't know he's evil Tiff doesn't so when, believe wow. a boy can ever be nice unless it's null yeah that's oh, okay. it <laughs> just null null is the only person this is, what I've, this is what I've acknowledged <laughs> but Link just seemed too perfect and too good to be true. So whenever I see a character like that, I think something's wrong. <laughs> and Charles, I was literally the only person that I talked to in my small webtoon circle at the time when I started Let's Play that liked Charles. I go, I don't know. He looks like Draco Malfoy and I like him. I think he's going to turn around and he did. <laughs> but uh, Link, no, I couldn't. I was so, I was on board. Yeah. I followed the story. It was I was I was all for it and then that I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I read honestly, I binged all of Let's Play in like two days back when, when I discovered it. So I didn't have so much time to think about who which ship am I on because I just read it in you know five minutes. Um but I will say so A about your thing of nice boys. So I don't think they're evil, but I personally <laughs> find them a little boring. Right. And then, but I don't think Link is perfect, especially at least now with this whole arc with Dallas. Right. As, you know, I mean, normal human imperfections. Um, but I will say physically, I did this thing with my friends where I sent them um, like all these screenshots of Webtoon men and I had them rank them for physical beauty. <laughs> and, um, and then I asked them which ones they thought I liked. And as soon as my friends saw Link, they're like, you're rating him a five, which was the top score. And I'm like, how'd you know? They're like, he's blonde, he's tall, He's a giant. That's your type. I'm like, yes, yes, you know me well. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's That's a web. great type. <laughs> <laughs> oh, long All hair. Giant too. with with yes. long hair. Yeah. Ooh, yes. My husband is is Dutch and he's like six foot four and very big and blonde, obviously. So not the long hair because sadly I cannot get him to grow it past like normally. But whatever. Oh, that's amazing. Hey, that's he so he ticks off so many of them that it just doesn't. Uh, you can you can live without the long hair. 
I, I watched that podcast with him and I was, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. He was amazing. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, he is. That's so and funny. By the way, I think my like of that look only happened after I married him. Like before that, I kind of liked blondes, but I didn't really care. Like I was like, whatever. I didn't care what people look like. But I think after being with him for a couple of years, that became my look. So, which is weird. So. Hey, there you go. There That's you go. Happens. That's hilarious. I know people ask us that too. It, it's funny. People ask me a lot. They're like, is your husband a ginger? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and then they're like, is he blonde? I was like, no. <laughs> He's none of my webtoon men. <laughs> it's funny well okay my husband is he is also like german but um he's got the coast gay look he does have the coast gay look there you go is he he emotionally constituted too (laughs) sometimes (laughs) no actually he's the sweetest being in the world but he took he had he had to work through it though to get there so maybe the same journey (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but okay, well, uh, yeah. let's get back to it I know we, we tend to digress here but <laughs> no that's okay Link's an interesting character I feel I'm glad we got his past story I think that made him less perfect and more likable too I think you know just to see the struggles not that I need to see struggles to like you but <laughs> I think it made him more relatable and I I guess then I like it made what happened more understandable yes Mm -hmm. so yeah so now Sam is ruminating over what Charles told her why did Charles have to make me take the lead I wanted him to teach me about and then ba-boom her thoughts are interrupted we have Umed and Charles stomping in don't mind us we're busting in like two kids who don't care their dad is getting interviewed by the BBC and that's a reference to the very funny clip (laughs) which is nice it's cute and she's jumped because, of course, like, she's thinking private thoughts, you know? <laughs> and she's like, what's up? We wanted to see how things were going with the engineer project we were working on. And she's like, oh, I sent an email to their general contact, but I still haven't gotten a reply, right? She was a little nervous about that. And Umed's like, yeah, that's what I was worried about. It's still early days. But if we want to get a better chance of getting through to them, we really need to get an internal contact. Charles and I both checked our network, and we didn't find anyone's type in indigenous. And Lucy is checking if your dad knows anyone. And now um, Sam, of course, does know someone. And she says, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. They're a really small company. Their industry isn't really his house. The house. And she's kind of glancing at Charles as she does this because he's been silent. You know, <laughs> he's letting Umed take the lead here. So I wonder if he's also a little bit uncertain about how to behave. Oh. Yeah, it, I was reading it. So I I was not even thinking about it, but if you're putting yourself in Sam's shoes, she's got to be hyper aware of every second that is happening. Meanwhile, we're reading this and it it really does just seem like Charles is being Charles because this is not how he would typically probably be in this situation. He doesn't know what they're doesn't know what's going on with the gaming world right <laughs> he's just there <laughs> even in meetings he's very observant yeah uh he lets sam kind of take the lead in different things because he wants to see her grow and stuff so i don't know i i kind of felt the same way as uh tyler said that it seems very natural of him um i i kind of question why he was even there to be honest <laughs> i'm like why are you in this conversation <laughs> but yeah Says, you know, I mean, Uved's like, can you think of anyone who might have ties to an engineer that can help? And she says, well, I think martial law said he had a lot of pull there because he's promoted their platform so much. And Uved's like, martial law? He's like, that's not a bad idea. He's a big influencer. <laughs> and having him assist might work in our favor. And he tells this to Charles. And Charles is all formal. He's like, do you think he'd be willing to help Miss Young? <laughs> totally not at all referencing their liaison. And she's, she's blushing. She's like, yeah, I think so. In fact, I think he'd be happy to help if he can. He's offered multiple times, which is, you know, we know he has. Because <laughs> Marshall has got this guilt complex, like, oh my God, it's so overdeveloped. <laughs> right? Poor baby. As, you know, <sighs> drove himself to the ground with his overdeveloped guilt. 
poor I love Marshall. Him so much. And I'm so sad for him. He's like barely in this episode, but I'm gonna go on my soapbox and be like, Marshall. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it, it, seriously though, it you know he will help which is yes. where this is like where our little idea comes in. Cause I'm like, oh, now Charles will probably see her and Marshall interacting some more. And get jealous. <gasps> Shoot. Mm, oh my gosh, drama. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I also, you know what? Thinking about too what Sam said earlier, she's saying, why did Charles have to make me take the lead? Charles knows that Sam is not a forward girl and she doesn't know what she's doing. I wonder if he did that on purpose so he doesn't get any more attached than he already is because he started to see how he is getting attached with all of their interactions with one another. I wonder if he purposely did that because he knows she's not going to take the lead. He knows she's not going to do anything. So to keep it at a fine line. However, there. he does also know that she will jump him probably at some point. So. At some point, yes. I am, I mean, I'm totally down for Sam just like t- taking control, like be the Khaleesi and take control of Charles. Tackle him, Sam. But I wonder, I do find it very odd. And it could just be a growth thing too, like you said, because he's done that before. But I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I, think, know. I think it's both. I think... Yeah, I think that he, I think also he doesn't want to um, maybe take advantage of her in a way because he would get carried, you know, he said he got carried away and I think he's afraid he'll lose himself, honestly, in his lust for her and not be able to pick up her cues, um, you know, maybe if she's uncomfortable. Right. Well, it, it's so easy to, clearly it is so easy to overwhelm her, so <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he's barely, he's barely it makes sense I would probably be in the same boat if I were in Charles's shoes I'd be like I, if I touch you you might explode so just let me know <laughs> she's like literally she's like a mine you know <laughs> you gotta be careful gotta be careful I know and even when she smiles at him you know he's <laughs> shocked by it and then smiles back like literally I don't know I'm like Charles, boy, what are you doing? He's I don't so know. cute, though. Deep down, deep down. I love when she sh- surprises him. I love that. I do. He knows. Like, he knows. Nothing catches him off guard, right? He's always very right. composed. Yes, yes. So I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see Marshall tied into this with Charles there and just see where things go about with that. So I still hold out for Monica. I still really like Marshall and Monica, but I think this time of heart's going to be really good. And I think Sam in here with Marshall and Charles is going to be somewhat chaotic and I'm ready for it. I know Tyler is too. So, but I do, I do like Marshall with Monica. I'm ready. Yeah, if we want to do, um, if you want to do another bonus question at the end about who do you think is end game or what do you think is end game? I think that would be really interesting. <laughs> yeah i've asked that for a couple of years so yeah i know okay fine we'll get to it then um but something that's interesting here about the sam and charles dynamic um Uman asks her if she plays underwatch and he's looking for a fifth member and he says oh you used to be a competitive gamer right and she said yeah i never competed in fps games only fighting games and she um says that she's embarrassed to have this conversation about charles even though last time when she mentioned the raid, he was like, oh, you don't have to be embarrassed. And when he says, would you be willing to give it a try? She says, I don't think so. She said that she thinks to herself, I'm not sure I want him to know that I used to be uh, a competitive gamer. So do you think she refused because of Charles? Or that's that's something I wasn't quite clear about, was that (laughs) the fact that she already said she was a competitive gamer, that already means, like, I'm not sure of her saying I don't think so would help it but I don't do you think she refused because of that god looking at it again that was my first instinct was thinking come on girl like it's okay Charles is not going to judge you for this he is right it's okay but I guess I don't know it's hard to tell if she would have if she did that because of Charles exclusively or I mean she does say she never had competed competitively in those types of games before so maybe she just doesn't want to try it but 
part of me also thinks Sam, maybe if Charles wasn't there, would have been more like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So Right. I feel like she was a little embarrassed as well. However, I don't know why, because he knows that she has game nights with her friends and does all these things and like she develops her own game. game, Yeah. So I'm so confused. I think she's confused. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. It's so, she's just, what an awkward girl. She just doesn't know. (laughs) She's doing the thing where she's like, I have to be cooler than than she (laughs) thinks she is. But really, she's, she is so cool already. So she just needs to embrace it. Yeah, it's it's concerning. Honestly, I, I don't want her to feel that way. Like we want her to be who she is and comfortable. And, you know, if she's feeling this way, even after Charles said, you know, don't worry about it. Like, I wonder if that bodes poorly for their relationship. Like if she can't be her, doesn't feel like she can be herself around him. Right. right. It's weird though, because I don't know why she feels that way since Charles basically tells her to follow those dreams and to do what she wants to do and, you know, be her. And he talks about how he enjoys escape rooms and stuff. So <laughs> I'm like, well, he's, yeah, she knows he's into fencing and escape rooms and those are just hobbies similar to gaming and he's well aware of her gaming hobby so it is fascinating that she would still feel such embarrassment right with that topic around him when by now that should be the least of her worries I would think I would but again it's her first it's like her first thing so she's really navigating how to how to behave and what would make her seem less appealing or more appealing to Charles right. and I think she's already so self-conscious of herself that she's like oh no I'm already frumpy and a nerd and I don't have any experience I don't think I need to be talking about raiding around him <laughs> I think she also is intimidated by him specifically and I think yes. she feels like he's out of her league if it was someone right. like Marshall she knows is a gamer or like Link is her friend and her buddy and like but Charles is very successful and you know uh we see his giant house or probably wealthy he is, has a good position in the company so i think she just feels she thinks he's the most gorgeous man ever i think she feels intimidated by him and mm-hmm. i think that she doesn't feel like an equal to him yeah. exactly i i remember in the elevator that elevator scene with rosewood when she walks in and um and in the garage i know sam was thinking to herself wow this woman would be perfect with charles And so even back then, she didn't see herself as a match for Charles. She would see women that kind of reflected the way Charles was presenting himself as a perfect match for him. But deep down, I don't think that's a perfect match for Charles if you go back to who Charles really is. And I don't think we, like he's an onion. We always describe these characters as onions like Shrek. Uh, I don't think he's truly unraveled yet. No. So, and I don't think Sam knows the real Charles yet. And I, I can't wait for, I hope is, she does one day, but. That is an interesting way to put it. It's, it's it, seeing herself next to Charles. It just, she can't compute that. It, like you said, she is seeing what he puts out into the world and what he reflects. So that's what he, she thinks should be with him. And she's very much aware that that is not what she is. So right. that's that's a really good way to put that. I agree. Yeah. I'm curious if that will be one of the things that will lead to them not being together, either right. long term or, or short term. I don't know. I I am okay, well I guess we'll do we'll talk about the end, but the end game thing. <laughs> But anyway, he, um, she says, well, he doesn't seem too concerned, but I wish I could know what he was thinking, especially with how distant he seemed this morning. I could use some reassurance that he's not unhappy with me. And now this is a very pivotal step for Sam. I'm so proud of her. She says, he, she thinks he told me to take the lead, right? She like braces herself. How, what can I do to reach out to him? And Charles like kind of looks up and Sam gives him a sweet smile. So she did it. She took initiative, which was so hard for her. I'm so proud of her. That was a, that was huge. It was <laughs> it's so such a small, cute. adorable smile, but it was it was leaps and bounds for our girl Sam. And his shocked face is the cutest. <laughs> he's just, and he's a little blushy. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, his little blush it killed me. I almost fell on the floor. <laughs> and he looks so happy. So this is where like everyone. I mean. 
I know not everyone's a, a Smash fan. Smash, did I say that right? Or a Charm, sorry. Okay. <laughs> a Charm fan. But I feel like this little smile it has, has to acknowledge that Charles is into her and is emotionally affected by her. So, 100%. yes. His gasp. He's just like, oh. <laughs> he's so taken aback. <laughs> that just shows how big it is. It, it, it's so funny because if you're just a person who would look at this part in the comic and not know very much about their characters, you'd be like, what is happening? right it's so big and even charles is acknowledging that with his reaction being so intense to just a smile the cutest the cutest i love them <laughs> this is totally wasted on sam because the girl is not wearing her glasses and she can't see it he's just like is he smiling back i can't tell i need my glasses and sam's like what is that look i mean it's charles so Girl, wear your glasses, Classic. please. <laughs> she does look Classic. so confused. He's got to just be like, oh, she smiled to me. That's so cute. Smiles back. And then Sam's just over there like. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> what's she doing? <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> thought we had a moment there. Never mind. <sighs> yep. I imagine it's going to be like that for a little bit of that, you know, chase back a couple steps chase back a couple steps back and forth you know with those characters that all drive us crazy but we still love it we still love it the chase but what i keeps mean you engaged it's the back and forth sometimes you just want to like get them together in a room and be like stop it just look at each other and tell each other how you feel <laughs> but i feel like it's gonna be a little bit they're going to have those awkward, oh my gosh, maybe he's thinking this, she's thinking that, you know, so. I like a lot of romance comics. <laughs> yep. Always, always. So now we switch to uh, the Daily Grind, and we have Dee sitting in an office area at her at her coffee shop, and Dallas comes over, he's like, hey Dee, I finished refilling the napkins, what do you want me to do next? And she's like, awesome, you're done for the day then, great work right? Praising him twice already. And he's like, great work. I hardly did anything. Just a bunch of little stuff. <laughs> and she says, little things easily build up to big things. And by you staying on top of it, Link and I could focus on other priorities. So you did a good job. See you tomorrow, Dallas. And Dallas is like, yeah, see you tomorrow. So what do you think of the Dallas D interaction and like him working there and what will it do for him? I until you actually made the the emphasis on her praising him twice and him kind of reacting to that very I hadn't really even thought about it that much I'm one of those really bad let's play fans where I'm like who's Dallas again <laughs> <laughs> I just know he stole all the toilet paper and I'm like sir <laughs> and I, I know he's Link's brother I know like he's he is in there but I I've had a hard time following I think it's because it's hard to feel bad for him until you see a little bit more into his past story because I I mean there are so many times you see like you're like Jesus Christ sir what are you doing right or Dallas I don't know if I said Blake or Dallas but I'm sure that has to be big for him is that he's doing something actually useful and to have somebody telling him that he's doing it good mm -hmm. and to feel like he's actually contributing to something I, I'm hoping that that'll be good for him I think, yeah, I think this job is going to help him a lot and she's going to help him a lot. I think he's used to failing all the time and everyone correcting him Yeah, and her finally telling him he's doing a good job and it's the little things that make a difference and add up to, you know, big things and him being shocked by that was actually pretty cute to see a softer side to Dallas, so... Yeah, I think that, you know, he's at a stage in his life where, like, people don't like him because teenagers are very obnoxious. And, you know, unfortunately, like, we, we've seen Link's behavior to him, and I totally get Link's behavior to him because I was the older sibling. I was extremely bossy and, like, critical, and I'm a mom, and I am a very tough mom. I'll say this. And, like, my, there are certain things that, about the way I parent where I'm, like, shit like sometimes I'm a little too harsh for my for my own good and I'm like you know what it's really good that my kids have besides for like other people they have they have my husband my husband is not a disciplinarian at all and so they have that like softer touch and I'm like it's good that they go to other places and like they you know because sometimes they feel like all I do is like criticize them I'm like clean up your room go you know brush your hair put this away do that and I'm like 
So, okay, I have to work on being more positive, but I'm like, you know, it's a good thing that I'm not the only one in their life <laughs> because they get a break from me and my toughness all the time. So anyway, this is my uh, self-criticism here where I'm hoping to work on that. But so Dallas, like in Link, they have a little bit of a toxic relationship right now. You know, Link is just criticizing him all the time and he's triggered by him and Dallas is triggered by him. So he's probably way more obnoxious with Dallas, with Link. They're both not great with each other at this moment in life. So they both need other influences, you know? Well, right. And I think, you know, Link kind of took on the job of trying to be the dad for Dallas and Dallas doesn't want that he just wants a big brother but I also can see that Dallas probably feels like he didn't even get to mourn his dad you know be able to be sad because then Link was always correcting him and you know he didn't really get to I don't know it's it's such a common thing I think many families go through um and that others can relate to i i think link and dallas situation i think link grew up too fast and i think dallas doesn't get to be a kid because of it and i think both of them didn't get the chance to basically mourn their father and be sad and just you know heal from it you know they're both suffering from it in different ways so that's just my take on it yeah, I'm, I'm glad that one of the things I, I say about this, like, let's play, is that I love that it's not just a romance comic, that there's other kinds of relationships going on that are very present in our daily life. And, you know, I'm glad that they make it into this comic as well. I love how uh, Mungi touches on so many different uh, life aspects in her comic and makes them funny at the same time and, yeah, appealing and relatable with her different you know, the different characters the, with the big heads, like confrontation and anxiety and depression and less, less is our favorite, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so relatable and there's something for everyone, I think. And I, you know, Tyler and I always tell everyone to read Let's Play because there's just a little bit of everything in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very well said. So do you guys want to do the bonus question number one thing now, the end game? what your theories are I'll, I'll do the stop recording and start recording again Ooh, okay okay so <laughs> we're doing a non-abrupt goodbye this is very uh very natural <laughs> we don't um we don't abruptly the- leave ever we don't, it's not <laughs> like we just throw our tinfoil hat over the camera and leave <laughs> <laughs> So yes. Yeah, so before we're gonna we're, we are gonna go record a bonus question. Um, I think two actually about the end game and about um, our dreams that we had with Webtoons characters. But but we're gonna say goodbye now to our regular listeners. <laughs> Thank you, Tiff and Ty, for coming on, and I'll see you in literally five seconds. <laughs> Yay! Thank you for having, <laughs> us. having us.